Okay, continuing our look at trigonometric formulas. In this video, we're going to take a look at the double angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. So our objective, use the double angle formulas to evaluate and simplify trigonometric expressions. Okay, quite a few things we're going to pull in here. The first one is the Pythagorean, the Pythagorean identity, which says that the, the sine of an angle squared plus the cosine of an angle squared is equal to 1. We've seen, we saw that a few video lectures ago. Just a note on notation. These two represent the same idea, the sine of an angle squared. And you can write the 2, the, the, uh, the superscript 2, between the sine and the angle as well. Uh, remembering from right triangle trigonometry that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, very recently we, we derived, uh, in some cases, or we listed in other cases, the sum formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are here. We're going to make use of these to derive the double angle formulas. And finally, I just made a note of the, again, from the unit circle, the exact trigonometric values for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees that come from unit circle work. So let's get started. We're going to derive uh, derive each of these three formulas uh, because they're not too bad and it's nice to see where things come from. So we're going to use the sum formulas which again are right up here. Okay, um, the sum formulas and in one case we're going to use that Pythagorean identity to derive the double angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. In all cases, what we're simply going to do is let beta equal alpha. So let's take a look at the double angle formula for sine. Okay, We know that if we say the sine of alpha plus beta, if we find the sum formula for sine, we know from above right up here that this is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. That's, we, we, we derived that and we've used that previously. Well, let's just let beta equal alpha. So this simply becomes, okay, the sine of alpha plus alpha. Well, obviously everywhere there's a beta, we're now gonna put in an alpha. So this is equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of alpha. Okay, so we're just letting beta equal alpha. And we can rewrite this, uh, this second product. Again, we can multiply in any direction we want because of the commutative property of multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite that second product. I'm simply going to write the sine first so we can see this more easily. Well, I've got the sine of the sine times the cosine plus the sine times the cosine. Well, that's two of those. So the sine of two alpha, alpha plus alpha is two alpha, is equal to two times the sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha. And there you have it. We have derived the double angle formula for sine. Okay? So we're going to make use of the same idea. I'm not going to write this line again. We'll go right to here as we look at cosine and tangent. Next up is tangent because it's a little bit easier than cosine. So I'm just going to kind of do these out of order, go from kind of simpler to more difficult. Okay, so again, we're letting beta equal alpha. So we'll use our tangent formula, the tangent of alpha plus beta, but of course we're letting beta equal alpha is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta, which equals alpha, divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha 
times the tangent of beta, which equals alpha. And so here we are. And we can do just a little quick math here. So the tangent of two alpha, again, because alpha plus alpha is two alpha. There's your double angle. Well, a tangent plus a tangent is two tangents. How about twice the tangent of alpha divided by, well, a tangent times a tangent is a tangent squared. So we'll simply go like that. And we have derived the double angle formula for tangent. The tangent of twice an angle is equal to twice the tangent of the angle divided by one minus the tangent of the angle squared. Okay, I left a fair amount of space here for cosine because there are some different ways that the double angle formulas for cosine is written. So I have the word here formulas because we're going to have three of them. Let me get my notes straightened out here. Okay, so let's do the same idea. We know that the cosine of alpha plus beta, but of course beta equals alpha. We're going to just substitute that. Well, that's going to be the cosine of alpha times the cosine of alpha minus the sine of alpha times the sine of alpha. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, of course, our formula with beta here had a beta here and a beta here, um, but we're just simply going to, we now have, uh, we're simply going to, we're letting beta equal alpha, and we come up with this. Well, we know a cosine times a cosine is the same, is the square. Cosine alpha times cosine alpha is cosine alpha squared, and sine alpha times sine alpha is the sine of alpha squared. And so this is one of three formulas for the cosine of two alpha, of the double angle formula for cosine. Now, let's derive the other two you might see. So let's recall, and we had this in the don't forget and the what we know thing, what we know, you know, the sine squared, the sine of alpha squared plus the cosine of alpha squared equals one. That is one of our Pythagorean identities. Okay, recall that, which can be rewritten as, okay, well, I can subtract sine squared, excuse me, I can subtract cosine squared from both sides so I can rewrite this as sine squared alpha is equal to one minus cosine squared alpha. Again, subtract cosine from both sides, or I can subtract the sine squared from both sides. So I can rewrite this as the, the cosine of alpha squared is equal to one minus the sine of alpha squared. Okay, so if I look at this, Okay, I can put I can put this in for cosine, and I can put this in for sine squared. I can, you know again if cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared, then I can put one minus sine squared. I can substitute that here. If sine squared is equal to one minus cosine, I can substitute one minus cosine in for sine squared here. Okay, so. The cosine of two alpha can also equal the cosine of alpha squared minus sine squared, which is one minus the cosine of alpha squared. And that can be simplified to give us, well, let's see, we're gonna have an, a minus and negative, we're gonna have two cosines. So two of the cosines of alpha squared minus a one. So that's another way you'll see the double angle formula for cosine written. And of course, we can now do the same thing with the other, okay? And we can say that this is, uh, we can replace the cosine square of alpha squared with this. And so it's one minus the sine of alpha squared minus the sine squared, the sine of alpha squared. 
And if we do a little math here, uh, a minus, minus, a minus, a neg this one minus this one is two, two negatives. So this gives us one minus two sines, sines of alpha squared. So there's one, here's two, and here are, here's number three. There are three uh, ways that uh, there are three ways of writing the double angle formula for cosine. The cosine of a double angle is this one. The cosine of of two times the angle is this one, and the cosine of two times an angle is this one. So you're going to want to use the one that it looks most like, and we'll see an example of that in just a moment. All right, I, I summarized them all right here. The cosine of twice an angle is two times the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. The tangent of twice an angle is two times the tangent of the angle divided by one minus the tangent of the angle squared. And the cosine of twice an angle is all three of these things the cosine of the angle squared minus the sine of the angle squared, two times the cosine of the angle squared minus one, and one minus two times the sine of the angle squared. Okay, let's, let's do some problems with those. Thank you. Give me a second to get my notes together. I don't want to lose myself. We're going to do some simplifying and some evaluating. I just got three examples for you. Okay, first example, find the sine of twice an angle. If the cosine of the angle is three-fifths and A is in, excuse me, and the angle is in the fourth quadrant. Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's my rectangular uh, plane. Okay, uh, we're in the fourth quadrant. And again, cosine we know is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse, of course, is positive. So we'll make this, and we'll make this is five. And that's my hypotenuse. Okay, so here's my angle. I'm in the fourth quadrant, right around there. There's the angle. But again, I can draw the triangle. Whoops. I, I draw a right triangle using the x-axis. And I know that I, I can use negatives to, to, to speak to this angle being in the fourth quadrant. Well, the adjacent is positive three. Well, that makes sense. The adjacent is here. Again, here's the angle right here in my right triangle. Okay, well, adjacent over hypotenuse is three over five. We want to find the, um, the opposite side, which in this case is the y dimension. In the fourth quadrant, y is negative. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the square root of 5 squared minus 3 squared. And we'll come up with it. This is negative 4. Okay, so this point is the point 3 comma negative 4. And it meets the, this criteria. Okay, so now... The sine of twice an angle, according to our formula, is twice the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. Okay, well, the sine of the angle, here it is, is opposite over hypotenuse, negative 4 over 5. So it's negative 4 fifths. The cosine of the angle, we were given that, it's 3 fifths, but it's also here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is three-fifths. We do that math, and we're going to come up with negative 24 twenty-fifths. So there you have it. Okay, example number two. Okay, we saw a similar example to this one uh, in our video lecture with the, the sum and difference formulas. Find the tangent of 120 by using functions of 60. Again, if we go back to our trig functions, we know 60. We know things about 60 right here. We don't know anything about 120. So we're looking for an exact answer here. And if we were to take our calculator out, 
I'll get my calculator out. I'll make sure I'm in degree mode because I'm using degrees and I'm currently in radian mode. So let's go to degrees. And I were to say, what is the tangent of 120 degrees? Tangent of 120. Okay, well that's a negative 1.73. Okay, that looks like it's an irrational number. I'm looking for the exact. Okay. So let's see here. The tangent of 120 degrees. Well, that's equal to the tangent of 2 times 60 degrees. And so here becomes, this is my double angle, and there's my alpha. My alpha is 60 degrees. Okay, well the tangent formula of the tangent double angle tangent formula says this is equal to 2 times the tangent of alpha divided by uh, looking for my divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha squared, the tangent of alpha squared. Okay, well we know, again we know the tangent of 60 degrees, I'll go back to here, the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 from our unit circle. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 1 minus the square root of 3 squared. Notice we're only squaring the tangent value, we're not squaring the 1. This equals 2 times root 3 divided by 1 minus 3. The square root of 3 squared is 3. Well, 1 minus 3, so this is 2 root 3, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And I have a common factor of 2, and so this is equal to the opposite or the negative of the square root of 3. So we got our precise value here. Let's go back to here. Let's see if that works. Okay, so our calculator said the tangent of 120 degrees was indeed negative 1.732, etc. Let's put in the negative of the square root of 3. We should get the same thing. And we sure enough do. Right there it is. Those two are identical. So we just found the exact value using the double angle formula for tangent. Okay, one more. Again, let me get my notes together. Okay, I left myself a bit of space for this one, I hope. Okay, simplify. 1 minus 2 times this, the sine of 4x squared. All right, well, what, we think this is where we come into those cosine. Okay, this is where we come into those. We look at our cosine, and we see we have three forms, and it looks like this one. I've got a 1 minus a sine squared. I've actually got a 2 sine squared here. So this one is of the form 1 minus 2 of the sine of alpha squared, which we know is equal to the cosine of 2 times alpha. That's a double angle. Well, let's see here. In this case, same, same. Looks like our alpha is equal to 4x. Okay, so our alpha is equal to 4x right here. We, have, we look at there. So that tells us that the one, 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of 4x is equal to 1, whoops, excuse me, is equal to the cosine of 2 times alpha, 2 times 4x, which of course is equal to the cosine of 8x. So 1 minus 2 times the sine of 4x squared is the same as the cosine of 8x here. So you're kind of looking for, when you do this kind of thing here, you're looking for what form is it similar to. Um, obviously, when it comes to you know, the sine and the tangent, well, you only have one to worry about. But when it comes to the cosine double angle formula, you want to see which, one's it, which one is it most looking like that I can then kind of play with the alphas, etc., to come up with the cosine form. Well, there you have it, our double angle formulas 
for sine, cosine, and tangent.